player factions get to take two actions every time their token is pulled. So we start by drawing a token and we get the Pearl Security Services, which really fortunate um, because I'll be able to use uh, Dr. Corey's special action to clean up the biohazard bag a little bit, which is what we wanted to do. But before we do that, we do our crisis adrenaline move. So I've got Dr. Uh, Martha Winfrey here, and my main goal with her is to get her adjacent to the rest of her faction units so that she can confer her bonus on them. Um, and I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, well, it's a crisis move, so I can only use her foot movement. Sorry, I was thinking about a vehicular move, but it's a crisis move, so I can only use her foot movement. So we're just gonna move her one space to there. And then up here, I have a pretty big stack uh, lumbering its way toward me, and uh, Dr. McCoy is not particularly great in combat, so I'm gonna move him one space to there, and then I'll move Dr. Uh, Corey one space to there, so now I've got a little bit more firepower in that area uh, to combat that. So with my first action this round, uh, I'm gonna use Dr. Corey's special action. And what his special action allows me to do, I draw a fate number, and depending on what I get, I will uh, be, I might, in a bad situation, add a biohazard cube to the biohazard bag, but uh, hopefully I'll uh, draw a good number and I'll be able to remove some cubes from the biohazard bag. So I draw a fate number and I get a two, not bad. So that allows me to remove two cubes from the bag. So I'm going to go into this bag and I'm going to remove the two red cubes. I don't want those red cubes in there this early in the game, uh, causing the biohazard level to go up any further than it needs to. So that's my first action, is to use that special ability. With my second special ability, I'm going to use Dr. Venkman's special action, uh, Prototype Anti-Mutant Foam. And again, I have to draw a fate number and hopefully I can remove some of the horrors from the... Uh, stack uh, that is facing him down. So we draw a fate number and I get a three. With a three, I get to remove two murder of horror tiles. I do two hits uh, on this stack. So I'm gonna take uh, two of these tiles and I'm gonna put them back in the murder of horrors pile. And that is the Pearl Security, Security Service's second and final action of this round. Now that they've taken the two actions, uh, we look, consider follow actions. And the Plum Island Constabulary is first. Uh, and you know they have five supplies and they have five units on the board, so they're gonna need those supplies. So what I think I'm gonna do uh, first is I'm gonna spend my follow action to actually search this area again with uh, Francis Drebin using his special ability. Hopefully I can get some supplies or maybe even something better. So there I've got, this offers the possibility of supplies. Don't mess with Texas. One of the ladies in your unit has a brother-in-law in the Texas Navy rescue boat organization and they happen to be nearby. Place the Texas Navy NPC unit in the closest beach area to this unit along with three supplies. Well, it doesn't put any supplies in my area, but that's not bad. And this is the Bellport Yacht Club fleet arrives to help. Oh, wow. So if the players collectively discard two supplies, I can immediately evacuate up to two civilians from any beach or docks area for free. Or three supplies, I can evacuate three. Four supplies, I can evacuate four. Wow. And what was that? The Atlantic Point Lighthouse, which is this area right here, that's not compromised. So I think I'm gonna have to take that uh, that capability because um, the, the amount of time that I, I can evacuate a fairly large number of civilians or evacuation points, and that's gonna translate later into actions that I don't have to spend. So I'm gonna quickly hunt around the board and figure out what civilians I'm going to remove and how many, and I'll come back and explain what I'm doing in a second. Okay, so I'm gonna spend four supplies. Now, as much as I wanna manage supplies, this is just too tempting to pass up. So the Pearl Security Services is somewhat awash in supplies at this point. So I'm gonna spend four of their supplies. And here's the units that I'm gonna evacuate. I'm gonna evacuate this unit here, which is worth two. And part of the reason I'm doing that is because this area is compromised. And this saves me the trouble of having to repair that area uh, in order to start evacuating. And then I'm gonna, from over here, uh, I'm going to evacuate these uh, units just because they're the highest point units available 
So that there is another seven points worth of civilians for a total of nine evacuation points. So I'm going to move my evacuation points up to nine. And we are well on our way towards avoiding uh, losing because we didn't show enough empathy and evacuate enough citizens. So that is the follow action for the Plum Island Constabulary. And they do not uh, draw an event card or they do not trigger an event. So now the National Guard gets to decide what they are going to do. And I think uh, Private Reacher is going to do nothing just to avoid the potential of drawing a, uh, an event and pass it over to the Greenport Township. And part of the reason I'm doing this also is I really want to activate the Greenport Township at this point uh, because I want to get one of these two units which has a uh, healing ability forward to help out uh, poor Kevin Blart. So we are going to activate uh, the fire marshal and move him forward to this space um, to join uh, Kevin Blart here. Uh, and he is he has a foot movement of two and so he can move there and uh, that will end his activation or end his follow action and we check and we do not trigger an event card so fairly successful I would say although we lose the opportunity to bring the Texas Navy into the game all right so now we're back to drawing a token from the turn order bag and we get the National Guard so with the National Guard, I think uh, this turn with five supplies, I'm going to bring in one of their units to try to get a little bit more firepower on the board. And I think I'm going to bring in uh, Corporal Agarn. Uh, he has an ability, if he gets critical hit results, he can stun um, horrors units, which is, is pretty useful. And he can uh, enter only at a helipad, beach, or docks area that is not compromised. I think good place for him to come in is going to be this Pearl East so that he can begin wor uh, sort of working on the horrors that are uh, in the Clementine State Prison. So he can't, that's his crisis adrenaline move, so he can't do anything else. So then uh, Mac Reacher is up next, and I think he'll use his crisis adrenaline move to actually come forward and uh, join uh, join with his compatriot to provide a little bit of forward defense up here against the horrors. So that is the sum total of our crisis adrenaline moves. The army hog uh, can only move with a reposition action in, as, a in the, the follow, as a follow action, so he can't move. So next we decide what two actions we want to take. And we've got two units on the board, so I do want to end with two supplies, but I am going to take advantage of uh, Corporal Agarn's uh, range combat ability. So he's got a range combat of four, and he's going to target um, this stack up here in Clementine State Prison. So I come down here and I'm rolling four dice. They didn't get any critical hits, unfortunately. In fact, not a very good result. I got one hit and a partial hit. The partial hit, of course, will have no effect because I need two of them. So all we end up doing is whittling this uh, stack down by one unit, um, and we're just gonna have to be happy with that. Oh, let me not forget, I need to uh, remove the, uh, I need to spend one supply uh, to use a ranged combat action. So I get rid of that five supplies marker and replace it with these two uh, four supplies markers or these two two, so now I have four supplies. So I could repeat that action, um, and that's maybe not a bad idea, but I think uh, instead I'm gonna use a Private Reacher to, uh, to search Pearl East. Let's see if he can find any goodies here in Pearl, in the Pearl uh, campus. So I'm checking his admin rating. Um, we need volunteers at the CDC. Thanks. So if, I, if his admin rating is one or less, uh, my unit takes one hit, and then each player uh, gets one supplies. If it's two or three, I get take one hit, and each player gets two supplies. If it's four or more, I take one hit, and each player gets four supplies. So 
Did you remember to check his admin? Oh, brilliant. His admin rating is a five. So, the selfless private Mac Reacher takes a hit, but as a result, uh, each faction gets four supplies. Let me just make sure that's correct. Each player then gets two supplies correct. So in this case, each faction gets two supplies. So each faction uh, gets four supplies, which is fantastic. We are really actually doing very well in the supply game here. So that is all of the actions for the National Guard. Uh, now we move on to follow actions. And uh, I start with the Greenport Township. And I am gonna use the Greenport Township. I'm gonna do a heal action here because I'm a little bit worried about Kevin Blard. So the Fire Marshal is going to do a heal action to remove one of these hit cubes from uh, Kevin Blard. And then I have to draw a fate card and I get an event first first up. So that's the end of my follow actions for the turn. And the event card is, I draw acquiring the scent. I draw a fate number, and then all horrors units on that track will move to an adjacent connected area, but only if that area has a non-horrors unit in it. Horrors that do move will conduct close combat. If there are two eligible areas, the area on the higher number track is chosen. If there are no units in the eligible area, then this event has no effect. So this is an example of a card where you the horrors can shift tracks. So I draw a fate number, and so I'm look, going to be looking down track one. So down track, I only have one unit on track one, and that's here. And I, if I recall correctly, let's check the card again real quick. It only moves if it has a non-horrors unit in it. And this adjacent area does not have a non-horrors unit in it. So we get a little bit lucky again, and uh, this card had, that card has no effect. Uh, but that does still end my follow actions because we did uh, draw an event card. So that's the end of that. We draw a fate token and we get a fate turn token. So the horrors are now active. So our fate card has us spawning on track three. So again, we are still spawning three. And the uh, the, the uh, Camelthop Simulator module actually does this work for you. So if you hit this button, it'll spawn the correct number for you. So we spawn three murder a horror tiles into a stack uh, on track three. And then we activate track four. So let's go over here to track four and this is not uh, perhaps the greatest situation. We check this stack has five horrors, so it is going to move two spaces. So again, we always start with the murder of horrors or the horrors unit that's furthest down the track. So they're going to move one and two. Um, this helicopter does not stop their movement. So they move one and two, and they are getting a little bit far down the board for my liking. They kind of... Uh, scooted past our defenses before we managed to set them up. Now this monstrosity, I'm not even gonna explode that, I'm just gonna use this to count it. There are eight uh, murder of horse tiles there, so this moves just one area to here. It's a little bit lucky in that we didn't trigger any combat, uh, but certainly this track is, is not looking particularly good right now. Next up, Impending Doom. So we draw an event card, and this is also gonna cause uh, horrors to move. So we draw a fate number. The horrors units in the area farthest along that track move along a, a white arrow connection to an area on the adjacent track. If there's two connections, they move to the highest number track, and it doesn't trigger combat. So we draw a fate card, and we get track number five. So let's go up here and look at track number five. So there's only one horror on track number five, and uh, it in fact uh, can move along a green connection over here to John's hunting lodge, uh, thus making track six all the more concerning. And we draw another fate token. So we are gonna spawn on track five and activate tracks three and four. So we're gonna 
come up here and we will spawn on track five and we are going to activate tracks three and four. So unfortunately, this Murder of Horrors unit is going to move down into the Riverhead Zoo and this unit, which I believe has three units in it, so it has a move, it has a movement of three areas. So he's going to move one, two, and now he's got to make a decision which way to go. This could be a very bad turn. So we will draw a fate card. And it's a two. I think that's probably was the best possible option for us. Yeah. So uh, he is going to go this direction. And so the Curtis family and War Room, who are apparently have War Room furniture over to... Uh, furnish their mansion uh, are spared for the moment. Um, but I've got a lot of problems brewing with uh, in the center of the board that I'm going to have to really start to deal with. So then track four activates. Now again, I've got this stack here with a movement allowance of two and I have to decide which direction it's going to go. So we draw another fake card and he gets a one and that's going to end very poorly for several of my civilians and gonna create some additional problems for me. So then we go up the board and this unit is still moving one at a time. So he uh, moves into the what's left of the schnitzel brewery. So uh, as a result of this, we have two close combats. Um, in this close combat, uh, this stack is gonna do, has a hit potential of, elite of one. And so it's actually going, oops, it's going to uh, eliminate Sharp's rifle shot from the game, which again has two effects. One, we add one to that Murder of Horrors stack for infection, and we add a biohazard cube to the bag. Here, this unit, I believe, has five, so it has a hit potential of two, which is enough to eliminate the tax and comics. So at least they were low value civilians. But unfortunately for us, this stack is now seven units large. And we add one more biohazard cube to the bag. So we added uh, two units to the stack and we added one cube to the bag. And that is uh, the end of that. Next up is another fate token. So depending on what we draw here, this could be very good or it's very, very, very bad. So track two and track one. And so this is what I sort of meant by this, that if that had been in the middle, that could have been really bad, but off on these two tracks, that might be okay. So we spawn onto track two. Let me just double check that. We spawn onto track two. So we're gonna spawn there. And then we move on track one. So this Murder of Horrors stack is the one that's going to be activated. But of course, it's not going to move because it is in the space with these two units. Um, and so we are now going to do close combat. So this stack has four objects. So it has a hit potential of one. And I think we will, uh, we're gonna use Kevin Blart to defend again. And it, it's mostly because of his special ability. I don't wanna load up that, uh, that uh, biohazard bag with cubes. So we have a hit potential of one and he has a close combat of three. So we're rolling three dice here. All right, well, so we got a shield which protected us from the hit uh, that the horrors did. We didn't actually uh, do any uh, damage ourselves. Looks like I may have rolled these units at some point. Perhaps happen down here. Uh, we didn't do any damage ourselves, but uh, so essentially nothing happened in that close combat. And again, because of Kevin Blart's special ability, we don't uh, put a cube in the biohazard bag. So the good news is, is that that is the end of the horrors activations for this turn. So after this, it's nothing but player activations. And we start with the Greenport Township. So, uh, crisis, first up, always, as always, crisis adrenaline. So we have the mayor here. And even though we recently moved him over here because we were thinking about uh, sort of defending over here, I'm going to move him back because uh, we need more defense in the center of the board. 
So I am actually going to move him uh, one and then two and get him to town hall. And then I think we're going to need uh, Ralph uh, Norton to uh, these, these two characters. Well, neither of these characters has a ranged combat ability, so that's unfortunate. Uh, but um, he has a movement ability of one, so actually I'm uh, Ralph Norton with his move ability of one, I am actually going to move him to the first precinct because I'd like to repair this bridge here um, because uh, I think I'm going to need that to get some units shuttled over to begin defending. And then I'm going to move Ed Cramden over here mostly to make sure that if this stack comes down here it, it has to stop. It can't get to the overrun areas. Um, crisis Adrenaline move. I'm going to move Dr. House as well over there and then I have to think about what to do with the fire chief, but for now I'm going to leave him where he is uh, in order to uh, continue keeping Kevin Blart on his feet. So, two actions. Let's Timika as our first action. Let's have uh, Ralph Norton repair this bridge or attempt to repair this bridge. So, his special ability is he draws two cards. So, fate number of four myself uh, the repair table he removed damage markers equal to the admin rating of the unit so probably that's going to be enough so he has an admin rating of two and we have two damage so that is enough to repair that bridge so that is our first action now as our second action uh, I think what I'm gonna want to do is I'm gonna use actually you know what uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do two things here one thing isn't an action but um, you can trade supplies between factions during um, a factions activation as long as two of their units occupy the same space anywhere on the board so the National Guard or sorry the the Pearl Security Services is really is a wash in supplies at this point um, they have let's see they've got five supplies here got six so they've got 11 supplies so I am going to have them give um, two supplies to the uh, green oh geez they have even more than I thought because they had a five under there oh my goodness okay I'm gonna have them give four supplies to the uh, Greenport Township to make sure that they have plenty of supplies in fact I'm gonna give them five supplies so um, I'm just uh, going to do that because I, I, they don't need to necessarily have. They have 11 supplies, and, and now we've spread them out a little bit better. So that's really just a free action. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take advantage of the Fire marshal special ability. Um, he uses a special range combat action, pay one supplies for water. So I gave him this extra supply, so I'm going to pay that one supply. And then I draw a fate number. Uh, so with a one, uh, it's no effect. Two, I push a number of horror tiles to an adjacent area and make them stunned. Um, on a six, I push all of the aisles, uh, all of the tiles, and make them stunned. So I think that the um, the stack I want to well, let's let's just push this stack back if we can. So we go down and we draw a fate card, and we get a six. So we push all of the units back. And we apply a stunned marker to them. So that will definitely slow up the horrors on uh, track one, which is uh, excellent. Next up is follow actions. And one of the things I found in the game is I tend to do a lot more follow actions early on uh, because I need to, um, you know, you've got very limited numbers of actions, but right about now, maybe not so much. So I have the Pearl Security Services up first, and a couple of options to consider. I can continue moving uh, Martha, and I could get her um, with the next uh, crisis, with the next, uh, I could get her in reasonable time frame up here, and she'd be adjacent to units. Um, I could use um, Kevin Blart's ranged combat. Um, 
is, is probably two of my better options, but I think neither of those options is particularly great. Let me remind myself how many horrors are in this stack. So there's four horrors in this stack. So I don't, um, if there had been five, I might have done range combat there because there's an, you know, that would have reduced them below the, the level that they round up and get an extra hit. So I think instead what I'm going to do is uh, I'm gonna have Kevin Blart do a heal action and he can do a heal action because he there is a character in the area with him that has the heal ability so i'm going to do a heal action to remove that last damage cube from him and then i go back here and uh, i've used all the fake cards so i've got to reshuffle the deck and i draw a new one and no event card so now we are on to the plum island constabulary in the plum island constabulary i think needs to start playing a slightly more active role in uh, defending uh, this center. Think about what they've got options to do, though. Um, okay, so I think what I'm going to do with the uh, Plum Island Constabulary is I'm going to activate uh, Commander Stallion here for ranged combat. Um, into this adjacent area. Remember, he's there is no, uh, he's not adjacent to this area, so he can't attack into there. So I'm going to do a range combat here, and then once I'm done, I'm going to use his special ability to move him into Carrie's corner, um, so that he's he when this when this stack moves, he's he's adjacent there as well. So I'm rolling three dice for range combat. And I get a critical hit and a partial hit. So the critical hit, I that is worth one, and I'm rolling again. And I get a shield result, which unfortunately, because they are in an urban or a building terrain, um, is nothing. But I did get one hit on this Murder of Horror stack. So we're whittling them down nicely. And then he will do a shoot and scoot action to move down to Carrie's corner. I've also got some search and some supply uh, possibilities there, location actions. No event card, so now we have the National Guard, and I definitely think the National Guard is going to have to do something, um, and it might involve this Army Helicopter. Um, I would love to get the Army Helicopter involved down here, but unfortunately there's no helipad down there, so I think the Army Hog Helicopter is going to... Oh. Excuse me, I almost forgot. I have to pay one supply for that range combat with the Plum Island Constabulary. And what reminded me of that is I think I'm going to... Actually, let's activate Corporal Agarn. And he is going to do a ranged combat against the murder of horrors in the, the Clementine State Penitentiary. And just as a reminder, his special ability is when we conduct range combat, if I get a critical hit, I can also place a stun marker on the targeted unit. So he is rolling four dice. Actually, before I do that, let's remember, I need to spend a supply in order to do this. So we will flip that from the two to one side. He is rolling four dice. And he gets a critical hit and a partial hit, so that's good. So we will re-roll the critical hit here. We got nothing. So not having a lot of success so far with um, range combat, I have to say, in this game. But we did do one hit, which reduces that stack by one. And it does put a stunned marker on it, which was really my aim, because now that stack won't move the next time it's activated. So we've got a an opportunity to uh, slow things down a bit. And so we draw a fate card, and once again, no event card, so we escape with three follow actions and no events, and that is the end of the uh, Greenport Township's uh, turn. So for our final uh, activation this round, we have the Plum Island Constabulary. So I'm going to take a quick peek at where they are before I start thinking this through. But we start with Crisis Adrenaline. Okay, so for their Crisis... I'm not going to do much with their Crisis Adrenaline uh,
movement because I think a lot of these units are where I want them to be. Uh, the one thing that I am going to do is I am going to move uh, Chief Lee Hartman two spaces. Again, I'm trying to get him to hook up with his units so that they can uh, take advantage of his leadership bonus. So now I have two actions to spend. And the first action that I'm going to spend is I'm going to activate Officer Joseph Friday, and I'm going to do a, um, a uh, crowd control action with him. Now, he has a special ability. And his special ability, uh, it allows him to either move civilian units to areas or escort them, which means that the civilian unit will move one area and he can move along with them. So we come back over here and he is going to do a crowd control and he's going to move um, this civilian, the Rough Life Dog Grooming, uh, mobile dog groomers at the airport, apparently, uh, and he's going to move along with them. So the goal here is I'd like to get him in this space. Uh, and so once we get this bridge repaired, we, he can shuttle uh, civilians off the board effectively by moving them two units, one space, two spaces, and that evacuates them from the Great South Bay Bridge. So that's his first action. And then with my second uh, action for the uh, Plum Island Constabulary, we're gonna activate Chase the Canine Unit. He's also gonna do a crowd control unit, a crowd control action. And he's gonna move these two civilians units to the beach um, where they uh, you know, are together. And the goal here, with his admin rating of four, he can move up and he can, in a couple of turns, he can get all of those units um, to the bridge tolls area where I can start to think about evacuating them from the Great South Bay Bridge if nothing goes completely haywire in the meantime. So that is the two actions for the Plum Island Constabulary. Next up, the National Guard gets to decide if they want to do a, uh, a, a follow action. And I think they're going to do the same follow action that they did before, which is they are going to uh, fire at this unit and continue trying to whittle it down the, uh, the, uh, the stack that is there. Okay, change of plans. Uh, since this unit is already stunned, I'm gonna activate uh, Corporal Agarn and have him fire against this smaller unit, a uh, smaller stack of murder of horrors. Uh, and if he doesn't eliminate it outright, maybe he can stun it. So we pay one supply. So we're gonna eliminate this. They still have six supplies, so they're, they're still gonna be okay. And then he rolls four. And he gets three shields, which are nothing in one hit. So really, again, not a particularly great result, but that stack is now down to one. So at least we are whittling it down uh, slowly but surely. So now we draw a fate card and we get an event. So we grab our event. Damaged rotor blades. The Army Hog helicopter unit suffers a critical loss of control. I draw a fate number. If it's a one or a six, it's crashed and removed from the game. If it's a two through a five, it's flipped to its disabled side. So it's a six. So unfortunately, the Army Hog unit is eliminated from the game. That is a truly unfortunate result, but such is life in, in the zombie apocalypse. So with that all done, uh, I can't do any more follow actions as a result. We uh, do the end phase. So replenish locations. It's not a night round, so we don't do it. Mutant regeneration. We don't have any uh, mutations on the board, so we don't do that. So we move on to the biohazard infection step. And I draw a green cube and a yellow cube. So that moves the biohazard level up by one. That's currently pretty manageable and then I refill the turn order bag so all of my turn tokens go back into the turn order bag and I advance the marker so my next round is a night round and as a player I get three actions per round thanks for sticking around all the way to the end of this playthrough of turn two or, or rather round two of the Plum Island Horror as an example of play uh, if you've enjoyed the video, it'd be great if you could you know, hit the like button, subscribe, share, comment, all those things that uh, help boost uh, videos on YouTube. And we'll be back with a 
uh, an example of play playthrough of round three as well, which will allow us to look at all the things that happen in our night turn.